Nazis, Nazis, Nazis. The Nazis are coming. The Nazis are everywhere. Your neighbor could be a Nazi. Your friends, your family, maybe even your wife. Well, not so much anymore. But back in 1944, they were all over Europe and needed to be stopped. You didn't know who to trust. Fritz Lang fled Germany in 1933, divorcing and leaving his wife there due to her sympathizing with the fascist bastards. And in 1944 America, he made an incredibly thrilling and fun film called Ministry of Fear. To all you out of work soda jerks without a penny to pinch, to the detectives with all the answers, to the dastardly dames who play men like baby dolls, and the trusted ones too pure for this world, and all you double-crossing, backstabbing, ruthless, baby-faced amateurs, this one's for you. So suit up, turn out the lights, put the match to your smokes, and sit back for the darker side of things. Sin a shadow moonlights, noir vimbo. The film opens with a clock. Why is there a clock? Who's staring at the clock? We find out it's Stephen Neal. He's sitting in a dark room in an insane asylum, waiting for it to strike six. At that point, he's free to go. Why is he in there? We're not sure. But he's been in there a long time, and he wants to be around people. He goes to the train station to buy a ticket to head out of there, and he hears a brass band across the street. Hey, why not? Go to the fundraiser, have a good time. See people, enjoy yourself. It's the Mothers of the Free Nation charity. He goes over to a cake booth. If you guess the correct weight, you win the cake. Sounds like a pretty good idea. He puts his guess in, and then he heads to the fortune teller and asks for his fortune to be told. She doesn't really tell him much, but when he says the magic words, forget the past, tell me the future, she tells him what he should say that the cake weighs. He goes back to buy himself another chance, and he wins the cake. Everyone's staring at him, and then a man's car pulls up. The man gets out and runs to the fortune teller. Apparently, he was the one that was supposed to receive the cake. What secrets are lying in the cake? We don't know. Stephen leaves with his newly won prize and enters his train car. Followed right behind him, a blind man who gets on. Stephen offers some cake to the blind man, and we notice, hey, I don't think this guy's blind. He's looking around like he can see. He's not even actually eating the cake. He's just digging through it. What mystery lies in the layers? The train has to stop at one point because, hey, this is wartime. The enemy seems to be bombing a munitions plant. Stephen looks out the window to see what's going on, and the blind man hits him on the back with a cane, knocking him down and absconding with the cake and running into the way of the bombs. This starts off an incredible chase scene. He gets up to run after the blind man. He runs through the fog. He runs through the shadows. He runs right into a shootout. He takes cover from the gunfire and notices that the bombs are getting closer and closer. There's a shot of a guy in the abandoned building and the bombs lay down upon him and boom, everything blows up. Steven barely missing the shrapnel that comes at him. He gets up to check out the wreckage and ends up finding the gun and taking it with him as evidence that this thing actually did happen to him. Steven goes to investigate the mothers of the Free Nation headquarters but not before trying to get the help from private eye Mr. Rennett, who has a great line. He says, I've never rejected stimulants as stimulants. No problem there, buddy. We all have our own vices. Then Stephen goes to the MFN headquarters, and that's where we meet Willie and Carla. They're the recruiters. They're the ones that follow the volunteers and keep all the names in order. He asks if someone could be running this organization as a front for the Nazis, and they laugh it off as a joke. They offer to help him once he explains the situation. 
Willie takes him to a Mrs. Belaine's apartment. There we see a young, beautiful woman decked out in a shiny sequence dress who claims to have been the fortune teller. There she is leading a seance. So they sit down to see what it's all about. The seance scene is eerie. The lights fade and there's a hypnotic moody tone. The lights are only on Mrs. Belaine. She's reminiscent of the robot from Metropolis. The lights are also on Steven. A woman's voice screams out to speak to him. We don't know who it is, but we assume that it's his wife. At the seance, a Mr. Cost appears. We recognize him as the man who should have won the cake. He's played by one of my favorite character actors, Dan Duryea. I like to imitate old actors, especially Dan Duryea and Walter Brennan. I like to make them interact together. I like to put them in weird situations. Like Dan Duryea say, Hey Walter, you're looking pretty good, man. Hey, uh, why don't you come over to my house tonight? Well, Walter Brennan replies, Well, I don't know, Dan. That sounds pretty weird. Maybe I shouldn't go. Maybe my wife, you know, maybe she wants me to do something, you know, like that, you know what I'm saying, you know. And he says, come on, Walter, it'll be fun. We'll have wine, we'll drink, we'll fool around a bit. Yeah, well, Dan, I don't know about that, man. Uh, I'm probably not going to go there. Steven ends up breaking the circle. Then there's a gunshot. The lights turn on and Mr. Cost has been shot in the head. They blame it on Neil. He's the newcomer. So Willie decides... Hey man, look, I'm going to let you go. Just knock me out and escape. So he knocks out Willie and jumps through the window, escaping into the war-torn streets, into the darkness, not knowing what the hell happened. Stephen makes it to Rennett's office, and he notices that it's been ransacked, and Rennett is nowhere to be found. He also notices that a man may be following him, so he gets freaked out and calls Carla. She's the only one that he can trust at this point. She meets him there, but an air raid calls them to a crowded, brightly lit subway platform. There, he confesses something to her. He confesses what had happened to his wife and why he was in the insane asylum. But I'm going to leave that to you to figure out. This movie is too damn good to spoil. What happened to his wife? What's in the cake? Who's a Nazi and who can he trust? You'll have to check it out. Overall, this is a great entry in the old innocent everyman thrown into being an espionage spy hunter genre. It keeps you intrigued and excited throughout and keeps giving you explosions and gunfire. This was the first in Lang's trend of top-notch noirs and it's on par with some of Hitchcock's best. Ray Milland plays a good guy in this and his performance is enjoyable, even if it isn't as good as in The Lost Weekend or Dial M for Murder. And be careful about those Nazis. Don't help the enemy. Careless talk may give away vital secrets.